Uh, welcome, everyone. I am Orvi Dingwall. I'm Christine Nielsen. And we are your Minet librarians. And we're going to spend the next 45, 40 minutes uh, talking about Google and how to Google for good or great evidence. And you can see my screen, correct? Yes, we can. OK, so we just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you've got any questions or if you're having any problems, you can look for the little blue uh, flower icon, click on that, and then it will open up your display box and you can enter in your question or your chat um, and we will be monitoring that for you. So what we're covering today, we always like to make sure that everyone knows about MyNet's core services. So we'll talk about those really quickly. Then we're going to describe what is Google? How does it work? And sort of just high level, what's the deal with it? Then we've got 10 really great Google search tips for you. Uh, and then we're going to talk about always my topic is about why associated with Google and its results and how you can do the critical appraisal of uh, what you're finding in Google. So for those who are new, um, or those who are uh, existing and are here for just a tiny review, MyNet uh, is Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network and is library service um, available to staff of Manitoba Health, staff of Mental Health, Wellness and Recovery, fee-for-service physicians in Manitoba, and staff of participating regional health authorities. We have five core searches or five core services that we offer we will conduct literature searches for you anytime you need a full text document you can request it from us doesn't matter where you heard about it or or how you came across it we can get that and send it to you we offer current awareness service um, so that you can stay up to date on articles from your favorite journals authors or on your favorite topics uh, we offer education and training and orientation sessions like the one today. If there are ones that you are interested in having, please let us know. Uh, and we also facilitate access to up to date. You can check out our website for the full um, for the full details on all of that. So of note, MyNet library cards are free. Of course, our sessions here, um, like the one today, are open to everyone. But if you are eligible for a card, please make sure that you register so that you've got it for when, um, for when you need it for, uh, so that we can provide our services just in time. To, if you don't yet have a borrower card from us, you complete the registration form that's on our website. And then you can submit it to us, you can email it in, or you can fax it into um, the number here. We have uh, a small but mighty team. Uh, Christine and I are your, um, your full-time librarians. Gail is our part-time librarian to support us. And Cheryl is our technician who is the magic behind sending you all of the full text documents. So on to Google. What is Google? Google is an index. So when you search it, it points you to different references where you can then dive deep in and to find the answers. Um, and it runs on, as I think many people have heard, a proprietary software uh, with personalized algorithms, which means that over time, uh, it's, it's changing. So they're constantly tweaking how Google works. So you might have noticed in the past that, you know, the way that you search for, not the way that you search for things, the search box has always remained the same, just that one Google search box, but um, how results are displayed or what kinds of results are displayed first, that does change over time. And that's because they're, they're constantly doing tweaks to the algorithms. Um, and Google, like I say, uh, how it works changes over time. It also changes based on where you are. And we're going to talk about that a little later. Uh, and when you search for Google, uh, it, pre uh, pre prevents, it presents you with quick answers um, sometimes and also a hunt for information. And on that note, I'm going to take us over into our search box and I'll show a little um, a little example. So I'm going to here define, I'm going to pop in really quickly define anaphylaxis. 
And, uh, and this is one of those quick answers. So you can see at the top, it gives me the answer um, to, or it gives me that definition really quickly uh, uh, with my definition. Whereas um, other times, if you just if you just do your search, anaphylaxis, um, then it will give us that index. So you can see it still gave me the. Uh, wait, you can see my screen, right? I'm assuming because Christine hasn't yeah. showed it. Say so we can't see your screen. Thanks, everybody. No news uh, is good news. Yeah, this is good news. I was just having a little um, a little moment of uncertainty. Yeah, so you can see here, search for anaphylaxis, it gives me the, that definition. It gives me some more quick answers here. Does anaphylaxis go away? I can just open that up. How was it caused? These are the little quick answers. But then that hunt for deeper information, as I start to scroll down, this is then where we're into that hunt for information. So sometimes when you search Google, you know, what's the temperature for today? Or just, um, you know, really quickly, if you're trying to find somebody's website, uh, like for example, for, for my nest, you were like, where, where the heck, how do I get there? I need to request my lit search, boom, there it is, quick at the top, uh, versus something if you were, you know, wanting to go to multiple sites um, and hunt for multiple information. Uh, Google also offers something called Google Scholar. And so I've got it here. It looks just like Google. And I can search here. I'll do that anaphylaxis again. Um, and you can see it gives me those nice prompts. So if it's a word that you don't know how to spell or you're just having a little bit of a moment and um, uh, uh, it'll, it helps prompt you. Often it is actually helpful and prompts you to what you want. So you can see here the difference already in the kinds of results that I'm getting. Um, Google Scholar has things um, from journal publishers, government websites, online repositories, universities, opposed to Google, which is like all of the internet. Google Scholar is more of the scholarly literature. And you can see here, if I look down, um, like this, this first result is from the, the journal, the American Academy of Pediatrics. The next one is also from a journal. You can see that I, I have some um, sort results to sort by, by the time. I could change, right now it's sorted by relevance. I could sort it by date. Um, I could include patents if I wanted. Um, and so this is really helpful. If you're looking for some scholarly information, Google, Google Scholar can be a really great uh, um, great source to, to search. And, and another note, sometimes if you clicked into one of these and all of a sudden and you loved, it was exactly what you were looking for and it took you to the abstract and then you wanted the full text, but if it told you, hey, um, the full text is not freely available, you need to pay us $85 to get the full text, don't ever do that. Just grab this citation, copy that link, send Minot an email, and we can get you the full text um, at no charge to you. So that, that's something really great. So that's a really, really quick high-level overview of Google. Um, they, we always think about Google as having spiders, and so it's always searching the internet for new things, for things that other people are clicking on, um, and, and that's how it is working. So now I'll talk about our top 10 um, search tips. And because uh, if you've attended this session before or you've heard about it from others, uh, these are things that are always changing our top 10 list because Google is introducing new things, it's discontinuing um, other things, and I'll also note that at the end of today's session, we will be sending you a handout that has these um, search tips uh, uh, just on one quick reference sheet. So you, you can jot them down um, or check off the ones that you already know about, um, but we will be following up. So the first is that uh, Google is not case sensitive. So if I type in an acronym like, um, uh, WRHA, for example, um, I'll get the same search results as if I use capitals. And similarly for people's names or for whatever it is that you might be searching, 
Similarly for um, fetal alcohol syndrome, FASB, I can type that in. Doesn't matter if I'm using um, uh, uh, uppercase, lowercase, if I mix them all up, Google is really forgiving about, um, about your typing, which if you're on your phone, that can be, that can be really um, helpful. So don't even worry about, about, um, about the case sensitivity. Uh, in Google, most punctuation is ignored with a few, so you don't have to worry about even including um, apostrophes or commas, uh, but there are a few things to, that can be really helpful. So the first are quotations. So maybe going on fetal alcohol here, if you put uh, quotations, if there's a phrase that you want to be searching, use your quotation marks because then fetal alcohol will pick up um, that actual phrase, fetal alcohol. Uh, and, and then all of the search results will only have that quotation. So um, if you're noticing, if you know, if you're trying to search for a phrase, um, then just, just use them. And this can be particularly helpful, not only for just, you know, um, sort of two or three words that you want to put together, uh, but also if there's, you know, an article you're looking for or something you remember seeing before and you've got a direct, uh, if you've heard a direct quote, for example, and you've got that direct quote, but you don't know where it came from, put that in quotations and then it will very quickly find uh, where that has come from. So quotation marks for phrases, absolutely use it. And many other search engines, so if there's other places that you're using too, because, uh, they also use this as well. So it's not just for Google, um, quotations can often be really helpful. Now the next thing is to think about the type of terminology that you're, that you're looking, uh, that you're using and the kind of terminology that you are looking to retrieve. So if you are looking for information on myocardial infarction, um, you're going to get more medicalized, more technical results than if you search on the layperson version of heart attack. So if you are updating a policy guideline, then you're probably going to want to include the technical terminology. Whereas if you're searching for uh, information to give to your patients, to include on a patient handout, to give to your, your mother or your children, um, then you want to use more of the lay terminology. So we can look here, um, I mean, off, with big topics like heart attack, myocardial infarction, the results are often, the first few are often the same, um, but, but not always. So you can see we've got some, you know, Merck manuals, uh, for information from some hospitals, Mayo Clinic, always a top hit. Uh, and I'll just do a, a comparator. So I'll look at heart attack and you'll note that I utilize those quotations. So I've got um, a different definition here that's more, um, it's from the CDC, it's more a lay definition. I've got those quick answers. And then if I look into these, these are their different results. They're from WebMD, from Healthline, Medical News Today. These are different results, even in those first, um, the first top 10 results that, uh, that I looked at. Okay, the next one is that Google's default uh, is and. So if I wasn't using those, um, those quotations and I just searched heart attack, Google understands this to be that I want the word heart and the word attack in my results. So my results here, they're pretty similar, um, but just, just keep that in mind. So if you, um, if you had heart attack, myocardial infarction, um, and, and stroke, you could, it would assume that you wanted all of those things um, and not or. So that's a good thing just to have in the back of your mind. Um, especially if you wanted uh, to not out or if you wanted to not include some of uh, a certain term in your results. Uh, so if you do want to take out something, I'll show you the results for nursing. So and, for me. Yeah, Christine. Oh, sorry. Um, 
Now, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm not sure if I momentarily tuned you out because some things went away on my street and I was trying to get it back. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to clarify. So you're talking about yeah. uh, default is and. Um, mm -hmm. So is, uh, I guess, is it better to use the quotation marks or to just assume and? Great question. Um, and well, I, I can ask, I can get, I'll give my perspective and then, and then maybe you can share yours as well. So I would say for specific phrases, um, and certainly like heart attack, that is a phrase, I would use quotations on that. For other things, if I was stringing together um, a, um, different, um, different concepts. So if I was thinking about, I want to know about um, like COVID tests, sites in Winnipeg, um, I would, you know, that's not a phrase. Uh, I want, I want results that are having all of those phrases. Um, I would, I would do it like that. But, but what do you think? Well, I'm, I guess I'm kind of with you. I think it depends. Um, sometimes it'll, it'll work well if there's kind of like more than one version of a phrase, you know what I mean? Like there's, because there's sometimes a whole bunch of different ways to say the same things. So if the words might be like in reversed order or something like that, then maybe without a, well, without quotation marks might be um, a better way to go. But I guess the only way to, to, to know is to try different ways and see what happens. For sure. Yeah. And um, I mean, an example of uh, a really specific phrase, um, I used to have at the top of my head, there's this great, there's a, a, um, a tool uh, that I think that people use for assessments. Um, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But if I think about, there's a, there is a tool called um, SBAR. So situation, background, assessment, recommendation. Um, if I'm looking for this as a really specific tool, I would put this in quotations because I'm not just looking for times when those four words are in the same result, but I'm looking for that specifically as as a tool then i would include the the quotations there and you know what if you're ever not sure you can always it's really quick you can try it um both ways and see how your results are are displaying okay yeah and if anybody else has some questions or um some points for clarity uh, or some countering viewpoints too about different ways uh, that you found to be effective, please let us know. So moving on then, I'll, I'll just do that nursing search one more time. Um, so I search on nursing and I, I'm getting some results about the profession of nursing, uh, which is great. And uh, but, some t but nursing is also the term used for, uh, for breastfeeding. So if I didn't want the breastfeeding articles, and I, if they were, if I was having, you know, some of the results were about nursing the profession, and some of the results were about breastfeeding, then I can use the dash or the minus sign, and I can, um, and I can include the word breasts. So this will then strip out. Oh, do I need a space there? I think you do. That gave me the actual. Wow, oh, this always happens when we do I, our. I, I, I think you need the space between nursing and the dash, but not the dash and breastfeeding. Oh, I see. Like this? I think so. Nursing space minus breastfeeding. Um, there we go. And so you can see when I incorrectly used my dash uh, that it gave me nursing and breastfeeding. Um, to re-emphasize our, our previous point. And then here, I just needed to adjust that positioning just a little bit. And um, then it uh, then it's focusing on nursing the profession. So that's a good tool if you're, it's not one <laughs> clearly that I use um, often, but every once in a while, I will be getting results and I'll say like, wow, this is, you know, it's like that same word, totally different meetings. And I want to remove that one type of meaning. This is a great way to do that. So another thing that sometimes is really helpful is to use an asterisk. So I, if I wanted um, to look at 
robotics in surgery, I can use um, an asterisk if I want to know about robotic heart surgery, robotic knee surgery, robotic hip surgery, all the different kinds of surgeries. I can include that asterisk, and it will give me um, it will give me uh, a bunch of different robotic assisted surgery. Um, it gives me lots of different results. So sometimes you could just put in robotic surgery; it'll give you lots of different results. And other times, adding that asterisk can give you even more results. Next is to search within the site. Um, sometimes you'll be on a site and you'll think, gosh, I know that uh, this website has this information, um, but it's really hard to navigate your way through that website. You can use this um, just like site chart for website and um and it and you can tell it to search within that site so let's just say that i wanted to do i wanted to search on the um, canadian institute for health information their website and i want to search for breastfeeding um then i'm telling google only search the cihi site and search it for breastfeeding and then it will do that search for me um, to find out the different breastfeeding information. So this, like I say, is helpful. If you think there's, if a website is just like impossible to navigate, it doesn't have a good search feature, um, you can use this as a really quick way to do it. And you can see here all the results are from the CIHI website. And this can also be good too if you're like, oh, I know that CIHI has this report on breastfeeding. I can't remember anything else about it. And this is a really quick way to get there. Similarly, um, you can use the file type um, command and um, I'll just search it for, again, breastfeeding. Oh, no, file type, let's say I was, um, sometimes I use this to see if, uh, again, I'll, I'll use this in a couple of specific instances. If I know about something like a report that was a PDF, I can search for a PDF and I can say it's about breastfeeding and it's about, you could add in something else and about breastfeeding and, oops, and about COVID. And so this will give me um, results that are PDFs. Uh, and you can see here on the right hand side that these are PDFs um, that are about uh, breastfeeding and, and COVID. So I'll use this. If I'm looking like for a handout, if I'm looking for someone else's PowerPoint or whatever I might be looking for. Also, again, for that instance where I knew it was out there, I knew it was a PDF, I can't remember too much else about it. This is a really helpful thing. And our final top 10, um, top 10 tip is about um, cached sites. So this is for if you, you know, used to go to a website, and they had something that was really great, or if they had something that was really bad, and you want to go back and be like, gosh, you know, this this used to be exist there, and even though it was really bad, I'm just, um, you know, I need to reference what they said, or whatever the circumstance might be. So it's um, information that used to be on a website that is no longer there. Uh, you know, timely things like COVID-19, that might be helpful to see, to go back, um, to go back and look at things and see some old, old information. So you might want to combine that cache search with, um, you know, searching on a certain site. Uh, like if you know, let's say the government of Manitoba used to have this PDF document about COVID, um, but it's not there anymore. You can um, get there by using this, um, this cache command. So those are our top 10 tips. And maybe I'll just flip back over to, um, so yeah, they were, here they are. Google's not case sensitive. Most punctuation is ignored. Use those quotation marks. Um, think about your terminology, a technical versus, um, versus layperson, or even uh, regional terminologies, right? Do you say, um, 
<laughs> where I'm from, when we say snow machine, we're not talking about a machine that makes snow, we're talking about a snowmobile. So just, you know, are you incorporating um, regional terminology? Uh, Google's default is and, exclude words by using that dash sign, search for incomplete phrases using asterisk, you can search with in a site if, if it, you, you're not finding what you need. Um, you can search for specific file types and you can go back and search old sites. So I have two more really quick things I will mention uh, and then we're I'm gonna turn it over to Christine. The first is that Google also has an advanced search. So once I've done my search on whatever you wanted on anything, you can come to the settings um, button here, click on that and scroll down to advanced search. And this will give me then um, just lots more options that I can search for. So including by language, region, last update. Again, if, you, for, if you're like, oh gosh, Orvi told me I could search on the site and I can't remember that, how that works, you can search on that site or domain here. So I could have put in my www.cihi.ca there. Um, you can, this, this, is, uh, this can be a really helpful tool. If you don't wanna use it, you don't have to worry about it. And similarly, in Google Scholar, there is also the advanced um, search option here. And it is this time um, in the um, three bar click down, come to advanced search. And similarly, it gives me some more results. And again, thinking about scholarly literature, you might want to limit it by a certain author, by a certain publisher, a certain date range, um, you know, exact phrases that, uh, you know, without the words, with the words, all that kind of stuff. So there are some advanced search features. Uh, you're free to use them if you want, or if it's gonna make your search display some better results. But otherwise, Google really is designed to display for you its top results. So those are the things I'm, so I'm gonna turn it over to Christine now, and I'll just click on the change presenter. There we go. And there we go. I think you should be able to take care of it, Christine. Looks like it, we can see your screen. And if you are talking, we can't hear you. Thank you. Uh, we should be looking at our Google results biased. Is that the one? Excellent, okay. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Um, let me also put on my camera. So as Orvi mentioned earlier, um, Google is, is based on proprietary algorithms and they tweak them from time to time. And so um, sometimes when you ask, well, is, is, is the stuff you get from Google biased? The answer is, well, kind of, yeah, sort of. Um, because those algorithms are there, um, I might not get the same results that Orvi gets um, based on what I've searched for in the past. Um, so if I do a lot of searches, um, you know, very, uh, professional oriented kind of stuff for mental health and that, uh, and Orvi does not, it's gonna kind of know that I'm more interested in things aimed at health professionals. So if we look for the same thing, we may or may not get uh, all of the same results. Um, likewise, um, I don't know if you noticed when Orvi was searching uh, for nursing, at one point there was like this map and it had um, like health facilities around Dryden. Um, so, Spoiler, we are not in the same location. Uh, if I were to do that search, it would it would say um, probably, you know, step around Winnipeg because I'm I'm in Winnipeg at the moment. Sorry, Orvi, hope you don't mind. <laughs> you, you fooled me. <laughs> so there you go. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that Google is a little bit of a popularity contest. Um, so when it decides what stuff to show first, um, it, it's uh, part of that formula is what people have clicked on the most, right? So um, if there is something that is 
um, for example, I don't know if, if everybody is is into preprints. Preprints servers are a thing um, where before someone submits an article for publication, they can put it up on the internet and then the whole world can find it. Um, so if you were to do a scholar search, um, it does look at some of these preprint servers, but you're probably not going to get those up at the top of your results unless the topic itself is really, really new, um, because it's showing you the things that have been clicked on more, um, so things that are older are going to be at the top, right? So that's something something to consider. Oops, here we go. Um, so kind of related to that, we've got uh, cookies and Google accounts. So um, I'm sure you guys have all all seen now with with all with all the privacy concerns. You, now you get all these little pop-ups on websites saying, you know, approve the cookies, accept the cookies, um, because they're they're gathering information. Um, through through your search habits, right? So if I'm logged into my Google account, it's keeping track of all the things I look at and where I go, um, and it's using that information to keep feed into that algorithm as well, right? Um, advertising, that's 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 part of Google, right? They're there to make money, um, so um, you are gonna find a lot of stuff that is um, Kind of geared towards uh, selling things, and there are, are are things written about how you know people kind of game the system to kind of boost their their um, their their spot in the rankings, so so they show up closer to the top and everything like that. Um, so a lot of times you will see you will see ads. Um, so as an example, if um, I'm gonna okay, so I did a, a search for salt room therapy. And of course, the very first things at the top are, are a couple of ads for places where I can go experience salt room therapy. Um, I've got my nifty little map about you know what where where I can go do that. And then down towards the bottom, I've get, got some stuff. Um, and again, I mean, not 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 so not so health professional oriented, but we've got things you know like experience salt.com and we've got a news article and things like that which might be fine um, depending on what I'm looking for but um, most of these so like shape.com I believe I'm not sure if that one is a is a retail establishment or not but if, if you if you look it's kind of more directed at um, commerce right so if I were to look at uh, at this in Scholar, I actually had done lymphatic drainage, but let's change that. Salt room therapy, oops, helps if you actually go to Google Scholar, doesn't it? Okay, so if I go to Google Scholar and I look for salt room therapy, I am getting completely different results, right? So um, I guess that's kind of a, an argument for kind of picking which Google you use. Um, not so much into, not so much oriented towards um, commerce in Google Scholar. Okay, so let me get back to my slides real quick. Okay, so, oops. Um, if if this kind of thing concerns you, um, it's it's a little it's it's a little disconcerting sometimes. So when people are collecting information about you, um, you can log out of a Google account if you have a Google account. That'll help a bit. Um, but you can also um, do what's called in private browsing. So um, Firefox, if you use the the um, browser Firefox, there's an option for private browsing. For Chrome, it's called the incognito view. So um, there's information here in these links if you want to check that out later. Um, and basically, it's 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 stripping away all those those cookies and everything. So it's it's not gathering information. So sometimes if um, if I'm doing a search for something that I don't want my previous search um, history to influence it, because I do a lot of searches for, for people, um, and if I don't want that to kind of direct it in one way or another, um, I'll do that sometimes. Okay. So, um, right. This brings us to critical appraisal. We're making great time here. Um, and if you've been to, actually, I'll pause. Are there any, any questions at this point? Either for Orvi or myself? 
I don't see any in the chat, but great reminder that um, everyone is welcome to input them into the chat. Okay, fantastic. Um, well, in that case, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so uh, we, we try to, to mention critical appraisal um, fairly, fairly often. So you might have, you might have heard the spiel before, um, but there are a bunch of different things um, that you can do to kind of evaluate what you're seeing, right? So we talked about, you know, Googling for good evidence. Well, how do you know if it's good, right? Um, so if you're, if you're looking at just kind of a fast, easy kind of, I just want to have a look, um, don't want to spend a lot of time. Um, we talk about the CRAAP test, and this is an acronym that kind of helps you um, remember the things to think about, right, when you're looking at an article or, or, or a, like a web post. Okay, so um, the first is currency, right? So um, is this something that's brand new? Is it something that's from 20 years ago? Some, I mean, sometimes that matters, right? Depending on, on what it is, and maybe there's been a lot of development in the area, but maybe not, right? So like, if you were doing something about um, smoking cessation, um, maybe maybe some older stuff is, is okay, as well as, as the stuff that is um, just right up to date. Um, I, will, I will mention that for a lot of times, like we want best practice guidelines and things like that. And when you can find one that's like, just brand new or one or two years old, that's great. But um, those things take a long time to make as well, right? So sometimes those things are, are a little older, right? So maybe you, the, the best you can get is 2015 or something like that. So depending on what your situation is, the topic that you're looking for, um, you wanna just kind of think about what what is the currency? Is Is that okay for what I need, right? Is that acceptable? And if it's something that's, like from 1986 and the field has changed radically since then, then maybe you don't want to use it, right? Um, secondly is, is reliability. And um, this, is, this is kind of getting at who, who is putting this information out, right? So uh, the internet is great because you know, all, you know, all kinds of people can post things, um, not, not so many gatekeepers, on the other hand, it's not so great because all kinds of people can post things uh, and not so many gatekeepers, right? Um, so like if you come across Christine's super awesome diabetes information page, um, you might wanna think about, okay, well, who is Christine? <laughs> Does she know what she's talking about? Um, you know, what's what, what kind of um, background, you know, is there, is this something that's coming from a reputable journal? Um, is this something that's coming from recognized experts? That kind of thing. And Orvi, you've popped up, so I, I assume you'd like to jump in. Well, no, I was just, I was laughing at your jokes along the way, and I thought that you would appreciate the, uh, the feedback. <laughs> oh, I see, okay. Well, that's fine then. <laughs> All right, but, but do chime in if you have, if you have any comments. Um, so yeah, so is this source reliable is what it boils down to. Um, likewise, authority, right? Is this something that's coming from, maybe I'm getting confused or maybe you can set me straight. Um, so the authority, like who, who is this information coming from? Is it coming from Public Health Canada? Is it coming, you know, from the CDC? Um, where, again, like what's, what's the deal? Um, where is this? Who who is is doing this, and what's the what's their source? Um, everything has a purpose or a point of view, right? So, am I trying to sell you on salt therapy? Do I want you to come to my salt therapy facility? Um, and so, I, I I have all kinds of information about how there it's 100% natural, and so there's absolutely no side effects whatsoever. Um, like, does, does does that sound legitimate to you? Um, or the other way around, maybe I'm very anti-salt therapy and it is absolutely the worst thing on the planet. And if you go to salt therapy, you will die. Um, kind of the other extreme, like it, clearly this is this is kind of trying to push a particular agenda, right? So is it, do they have like a balance, you know, like is this particular thing saying about the benefits and the drawbacks of something? Or is it all just, 
just one? Are they trying to sell you on something? You know, get get all the vitamins. What what what's the what's the purpose of this particular piece of information? Right. Um, and also, is this at the right level for what you need? Like so, Orvi was talking about um, using different terminology to find things. It's aimed at a health professional versus a patient. So. Um, is is the patient information what you want, right? Um, is is the is the lingo too complicated? If that's the case, um, does it does it fit what uh, what your purposes are? Okay. Um, and again, kind of getting at that that perspective. Maybe if if you're seeing stuff that's very um, oriented towards one perspective, maybe try and have a look at other ones like. Um, if I if I if I see all the good things about salt therapy rooms, maybe maybe have a look and see what's out there that's not so um, glowing. Okay, and this one sounds a little weird, <laughs> but but are like are there mistakes? You know, is there typos, grammar issues, that kind of thing? Um, and basically, that's just kind of an indication of the overall quality of of the source. Um, and I mean mistakes do happen but um if this is if this is rampant right then maybe 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 this is not the most high quality source of information okay um i will quickly talk about uh predatory publishers um we won't go into specifics uh but basically predatory publications um basically don't have that quality control that we were talking about so uh where are we here? The think, check, um, submit. This is aimed at researchers. So if they're trying to figure out if this is um, someplace where it's it's a, a trusted journal, um, there's quality control, there's peer review. Um, they can they can figure out because sometimes you know it's it's hard to tell which it, which are the legit journals and which are not. Um, so this is a resource that you could use as well if you're if you found something that's um, as an article, like a, that presents itself as a research article, um, something that is useful if you are just looking at, you know, s news articles or s stuff just generally on the internet. We have some uh, fact-checking sites as well that you can check out. So, for example, we've got healthfeedback.org. Um, these days, it's pretty COVID-heavy, so I mean, understandably, um, but they kind of look at uh, stuff that's circulating on the internet um, and say, okay, well, you know, for example, this one here, unvaccinated people are more likely to die of COVID because they're vulnerable to infection and severe disease. Um, this is something that I guess showed up on, on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and it's, it is labeled as misleading. And so if you want to get information on, on how they, they evaluated this particular piece of information um, or claim, then, then you can click on it and, Get more information there. Likewise, um, here's one that is been labeled inaccurate. Um, so if I click on one here real quick, um, you can see the details. Um, and basically, they're saying they they've ignored context completely, right? So it's not completely like this is just a flat out wrong, but th the way that the information presented is is not. Um, it's not great. It's misleading people and giving them the wrong impression. So you can kind of read this whole report. Um, and they've even got references. Look at that. So you can you can check up on on uh, what they're what they're saying. Um, and also, also that's that's a good idea too if you're on the internet and somebody's saying something. It's like, oh, Christine's salt therapy website says this. Am I just saying it, or do I have something to point to to back it up? Right. Um, likewise, we've got Snopes, and you might have heard about Snopes in the past. It's a pretty, pretty uh, famous one. All right. So apparently, I didn't know this, but it was the word was unvaccinated Americans were going to be put into camps, which is not true. Um, so you can you can read about how how these things kind of got going, um, and along the same lines, if it's if it's just pure myth or if it was something that was kind of taken out of context or what have you. Okay. Um, so, oops, I had one more thing that I wanted to show you. Sorry about that, guys. 
Um, there's also, uh, we talked about just general internet stuff, we talked about predatory stuff. There's also differing levels of quality for articles that are published in legit journals, right? So it's always a good idea to have a, like a critical eye. Um, and we've got um, in, in your handout, there are links to this as well. There are checklists you can use to, to kind of look at an article um, and say, okay, was this study done properly? Um, is this something that I can, I can have reasonable confidence that it is, um, it is reliable, that, that the information there is not overly biased or um, in, in, the, in the way that science stuff is biased as opposed to other bias, um, or, or if there's um, different, you know, methodological issues or, or things like that, right? So we've got these checklists. And another excellent tool is the National Collaborating Center um, for Methods and Tools. And they kind of have like a little, almost a little course, right? So um, you can kind of go through these modules and, and learn about critical appraisal and how you can apply um, research to your practice. Okay, so it has been a whirlwind 45 minutes. <laughs> and I mean, like everything, Google, it has, it has some caveats, uh, but it is, it is, it's good. It's, it's, a, it's accessible. Um, you can find good things on there. Um, you just have to, to keep an eye out to make sure that everything that you're using, um, is, is, is kind of good evidence, right? As, or as Orvi uh, pointed out, excellent evidence um, as opposed to something that is, it is flawed or inaccurate, okay? Um, because, you know, we all, I'm sure we've all seen some stuff on the internet that makes you go, what are you talking about? Right, so um, remember to kind of assess things as you go um, and if, if you're not sure about something, you know, maybe check out like another, another source or um, you can have us do a literature search for you. Uh, one, one tip that I, I picked up in a, uh, a webinar about, about uh, uh, evaluating information on the internet is like, if you're not sure, like, is this one of those predatory, predatory journal publications? Um, you can say, okay, well, this is the publisher and you can do something like a Wikipedia search for the publisher. Um, and see what it says about that. Um, something I've I've done in the past is I've put in the title and then the phrase predatory journal and see if something comes up saying this is a predatory journal or sometimes um, I've come across um, stuff that says you know it was originally classified as a predatory journal it was but it's now it is considered you know not so much and and you can kind of get a little more background information about things that way as well. Okay. So um, we are pretty much on time. Um, are there any questions from you guys for either myself or Orby? Yeah, I don't see any questions in the chat, but I'm totally going to use your, your uh, grab the title and then Google it with predatory. <laughs> I, I haven't done that before. And also, you know, too, if your spidey senses are tingling and you're just feeling a little overwhelmed or lost, you can definitely send us a message and say like, hey, can you help me assess um, the quality of this? And we've also got recordings of past sessions that we've done on just critical appraisal. So 45 to 60 minutes, just really diving deep into um, critically appraising sources. So we were scheduled until 2.45 and we're almost at 2.50 and there aren't any questions. So maybe we'll conclude for today. And we thank you very much for joining us today. Next month is, we're talking about how to find images that you can use in presentations or for different, um, different uses you might have. So that's a great session to tune into. And uh, yeah, just thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye.